Hey everybody, this is Tim Ferriss, and I am answering a question today that I get very often, which is, what are you learning? What are you studying? And it is 2020, and I am an amateur learning hand percussion, specifically with this instrument. And it looks like a UFO, as you can see, and it is known by many different names. Some people call it a hang, some people call it a hang drum, there are religious wars about this, and other people call it a hand pan. There are many different brands, many different makers. This particular instrument was made by Dave Beery, B-E-E-R-Y, super sweet guy in California, and this is tuned to the hijaz scale. And this instrument, you can think of it, this is simplified of course, as a steel drum that you might see in the Caribbean, which has been turned into a casing with two sides. And this particular instrument is tuned with hammering and metalwork. So you really don't want your instrument to get knocked out of tune, unless you happen to be a really good metalworker. And I'm going to demonstrate some basic features of the instrument. I am not a good hand pan player or hand percussionist, but I've been very fortunate to get a handful of very, very nice instruments. This is Dave Beery's. This is another hand pan that I'll demo down here, which is made by Jan Boren. Hopefully I'm getting that name right. J-A-N-B-O-R-R-E-N in the Netherlands. And I've had some fantastic instruction from someone I found on YouTube because he's amazing, David Kukharman. I'm sure, David, I'm screwing up your name yet again, but David, K-U-C-K-E-R-H-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. And you can find him at handpandojo.com where he offers all sorts of online courses and programs for learning this instrument. And if you want to see a highlight of him, just search his name and prelude on YouTube. It's amazing. He has 50,000 plus followers on YouTube for playing hand percussion, which is, is a, a feat in and of itself. All right, enough said, let's get into this. So I'll just demo some basics. Once again, to emphasize, I'm not a good player but I love playing this instrument. And of course I say without further ado and then I keep on going with my preamble, but I tried many, many musical instruments when I was a kid. I tried piano and I quit. I tried trumpet and I quit because in the beginning it's very hard to sound good. I did gravitate towards five piece drum kit but only had a few lessons until I graduated from college at which point I was in a tiny apartment and could, couldn't make it work. So you hear there is a lot of reverberation and the sound between these two instruments will be very, very, very different. Okay, so you've got a scale. This is tuned to Hijaz, which has a Middle Eastern sound to it. All right, now producing sound out of this, and I apologize to David, if I get anything wrong, it's my fault, it's not your fault. David is a machine, he's amazing. And one of the best teachers of any skill I've ever met. These are tone fields, and I'm making contact with my index finger primarily around this portion of the tone fields, these tone fields, and I'm playing with my thumbs as I get closer to my body because otherwise I end up going chicken wing and it's ergonomically very uncomfortable, right? So I'm playing that with my thumb slightly bent, not like that, because that is how you make your hands ache, which I did in the beginning. And this is the ding, or the doom, there are many different words for it. I'm playing that with this thicker part of my thumb, or index finger rather, and making contact with the palm. So let me just tool around on this for a second, and it'll give you an idea of what this thing is capable of. And I'll try to produce a few different types of sounds. So. notes are referred to as ghost notes, which are really cool. David introduced me to those. 
And uh, these are the tone fields. And then you can get some cool effects. You can use hands like this, which you wouldn't want to hit on the tone fields, but if you wanted to do. Right, you can do that kind of thing. There's a tuck, which is that type of sound. So if we were to use, and these are my notes from some of what I did with David, if we were to use a rhythm known as the, I believe it's Khaliji, K-H-A-L-I-G-I. I unfortunately do not speak Arabic, but there are a lot of amazing, amazing rhythms and techniques that come out of Middle Eastern music. It would look something like the following, and there are different ways to play it. So, So notice, I'm doing one, two. So the right hand is having two points of contact. Now you can produce the same sound using alternating hands and just the left hand. So if you look at this. Now I just switch to the left hand. different hand techniques for producing the same rhythm on the same surface. And which you use would depend on what you're using and how you're using the rest of this surface. It's super exciting. It's so fun. Uh, and uh, you can use multiple fingers on multiple tone fields. So if I wanted to do something, let's just say like, and I'll move over to this other hand pan in a minute, but. I'm using these two fingers together. Right? David does all this a thousand times better, so go watch his videos, but this will show you how much a, a novice who really doesn't know what he's doing can have fun with this instrument. And playing just 10, 15 minutes in the morning or at night is just pure bliss and meditation for me. All right, so this is that surface, Dave does really, something really fun with his instrument, this particular instrument, where you can see the surface is very different on this side. And uh, if you were, say, doing a performance on a handpan, after 60 minutes of one scale, you might get tired of doing what you're doing. People might get a little fatigued of listening to it. So then, right, so you can, you can play with all sorts of stuff. I'm less practiced on this side, but. Right, you can certainly throw some novelty in there. So that is, that is handpan one from Dave, uh, which I really enjoy playing. And this is a very, very different handpan from the Netherlands. And you can see, it looks a bit like, uh, a handpan that took at least one or two hits of acid. It is asymmetrical, and the tone fields are no longer uh, identically oval, so it's distributed differently. And another difference that you'll find, and I'm not adept enough to take advantage of this, is there are tone fields on the bottom, so that you could hypothetically be playing on this side and still... <laughs> You can take advantage of this under the rim, which is really cool. David's exceptional at doing this. And the way I'm ori the orienting this is, generally speaking, and those of you who are paying attention may notice this has more tone fields, more notes. And I'm orienting this so that the deepest note is pointing towards my navel, effectively. And that's gonna split this right down the middle so that I have my left and right hands working on 50% of this instrument, right? And so you, very different. Very different look and feel. And you can find some of these, uh, some of these instruments are tuned with minor key, so it can have a melancholic, 
sort of poignant sound to it, and others are very upbeat, and it's hard to go wrong. When you have an instrument like this tuned in a particular way, you can kind of whack on it almost any way you want, it's gonna sound pretty good. Uh, so, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, And then you can do you can do scales. So you can do seven notes, eight notes, nine notes, something like. Oops. And that could be a practice where you go like seven, eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, or seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, nine. And uh, then there is a technique. So we talked about talk, right? Uh, and uh, you could use that for any number of rhythmic combinations. So for example, you could do something like So slowing it down. And then if you wanted to throw tox in there, you could do that as well. So you could do something like. Right? You can also go higher up. Within that, you can really experiment. So, if you want to do something a little more uh, involved, you could do. Right? And then you just riff. And uh, it's very, it's a play, very playful instrument. Also play sort of a a a a drum on its side. Oi. Where? Right. There's a lot to be done. So those are some of the basics. I'll show you one more type of hand contact. And you can use all sorts of, right? David's quite good at using his knuckles. Uh, but you can do a slap as well. So I'll set up once again. Get the lowest note in front of me. So you can do something like, uh, so the slap I'm going to do outside of the tone field, and you can do it with your, so you're sort of pushing into the instrument, it's not a quick release, if you can see that. Alright, so you might do something like. So there you have it, folks. Uh, this is one of my favorite instruments. It is a really fun instrument to play. It is, unfortunately, because of the worksmanship that has to go into these, it is a, an expensive instrument to purchase, but they're beautiful. And it's allowed me an entryway into music and becoming fascinated with music in a way that I haven't known before because it's difficult to take a five-piece drum kit and put it in your house for a lot of people. It is difficult to travel with a five-piece drum kit, but when you have something like this, uh, or many other types of frame drum or other hand drums, it opens up an entire universe of possibilities. And another aspect of that that is really beautiful is hand drumming has existed in every civilization. Uh, past, present, I'm sure in the future, and across the world. So it is a common language. Anyway, 
there you have a brief introduction to my love of this instrument. My apologies for any mistakes that I may have made. Uh, if I misspoke, if I offended anyone's delicate sensibilities, my apologies. Uh, but uh, thank you to Dave Beery, to David uh, Kukharman, Kukharman? Uh, who is just remarkable, and the many people out there who are producing these instruments and producing beautiful music. Thanks, guys.